Another question, yeah. man. I want to talk to you about um, your time at the treatment center, man. How was that for you? You know what I mean? Now you you in this bubble now, man. And Yeah. So so in the treatment, man, that was the best thing that happened to my life, man. It was a scary <laughs> thing because, you know, not knowing the outcome and not knowing what's going to happen and, 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 and not knowing how it's going to feel after I get out because, lo and behold, it don't work. Mm -hmm. Boy, right. this can't say <laughs> Oh, man, that's a, right. <laughs> yeah, right. So I wanted it to work, but I knew I had to put the work in, you know, because yeah. I didn't say what I work is there. Mm -hmm. And so going into it, man, I mean, I spent 10 days detox. It was mm -hmm. the worst 10 days I probably had in my life. Was you relapsing, it, AG? Was you feeling the relapse? Was it hitting you hard? So I went into it on one. Okay. You know, I was taking, yeah, I was. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was taking I was taking the uh the Uber to the treatment facility from the airport, hitting the bag, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't know what you was getting into. You were trying to get I your mind right before you got there, huh? <laughs> I told the dude, I said, look, treatment for 45 days, bro. I'm gonna get on one in the back seat. I'm just like, no. <laughs> I'm just like, like that. You last the time. Uh and I was drinking in the airport and all that, but yeah, I was. Yeah, I was trying to. I was. I was. I was ready to leave. You know what I'm saying? Because the thing about it, bro, I was, on my, I was always on my phone. Mm -hmm. You know, like most of us. You know, I was always running this drug, always running this alcohol, always around people, doing what I'm used to doing, being comfortable. And now I get uncomfortable as I can get. Like my phone took from me. There was no TV. There was no windows, bro. No windows. I couldn't look outside. There was not no people. I couldn't. Bro, I just had me and a couple of books and a duffel bag, bro. That's wow. all I had with me, mm. bro. Mm. Wow. If they put me in the room and they would knock on the door, like I'm in county. They would. My homeboy kind of make jokes like, oh, "You gonna put everybody in county? You going to county?" <laughs> <laughs> but they would knock on the door, and I have to wait ten seconds to to open the door to get my food, my breakfast, lunch, and dinner, bro. Mm -hmm. I couldn't. Body, bro. I, bro, I almost went, bro. I was in there like, like almost going crazy. Wow, Dang. like I'm crazy. So then, the, the first three days was the hardest. Uh, after that, I started getting kind of used to it. I just kind of dealt with it. You know, I'm to like six showers a day. You know, what I'm saying I was trying to stay. <laughs> I'm doing push ups. You know, and just kind of just. I started reading. After the ten days, I got out. I could be around people. That's when it started. Like that psychedelic, the psychedelic change. You know. Mm. That's when it started to happen. That's when I started to get okay. Now I'm starting to recover. Yeah. You know, at this point, seven days sober. It's like, okay, you know, you still kind of, you still, you still at risk. You know, you still in the red zone, but like you okay now. You know. <laughs> so I started, uh, started being able to eat with the people. I started going to counseling. A cool dude named Juan, man. He can, man. He saved my life, man. It's a cool OG dude, bro. My counselor, and I would talk to him. He was available 24 hours a day. Mm. You know, and uh, I would go see counselors. We would go to these classes, these therapy classes. Uh, we would do step work, and every night we'd go to an AA meeting. And somebody would come in and speak and tell their story. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't go alone, you know. And it was other. So the, the one that I went to in Jacksonville, there was other uh, NFL players, current and former NFL players. That's where they sent them to. Mm -hmm. So, okay. so I didn't really feel like, like I didn't really stand out. You know what I'm saying? There was some, there was, there was some dudes in there like, okay, man, like, bro, I know who you are. That's crazy that you in there. Like, okay, we're going through the same struggle. I'm, I ain't alone. And he ain't alone, too. We kind of, mm -hmm. kind of, that, that, kind of shared that pain for real. You know, and, uh, bro, going through that, man, was like, was, was like, I mean, it was life changing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, getting real therapy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Getting real hip. Bro, I was talking to my sponsor. Like, how many days you sober? At this point, I was like, 29 days. He was like, you were sober as you're gonna be. Now it's time to recover. Mm -hmm. You know, time to heal. Like your brain's still healing. So take time. You know, take your time. I picked good foods and but I started working out again. You know, I started getting back in shape. Like I'm drinking water all day. You know, I'm eating fruits and vegetables and I'm reading some I'm, I'm, I'm speaking better. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm listening to people talk and replying. Like I started feeling like a real, like a whole new man. You know, and I had a couple of like dreams and a couple of thoughts, but Nothing really motivated me to go back, you mm -hmm. know. And I, I think about those times, bro, that I was ex like explaining to y'all, where it got bad. But when I'm waking up, I was miserable. Yeah, you know, 
if I do get them thoughts in my head, I always go back to that time, but I'll get like teary eyed and like motivated and like, no, bro, I would never. I, I told myself in treatment, I told myself in treatment, bro, in that 10 day detox, I told myself looking at the wall, bro, I said, bro, tears in my eyes. I swear to God, bro, I never go back to that ever. Yeah. Ever going back to that, bro? I would never go back to that person, but that person is gone. Mm-hmm. Like from here on, when I get out of here, I'm about to get busy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. For real, I'm about to really get busy when I get up out of here, bro. Because ain't no way I can go from third round, ninety six overall pick, bro. Yeah, to mm-hmm. the Packers, bro, and have all the success and dreams finally come true. You know what I'm saying? And and and, and sleeping in my car, if I sleeping in my car, bro, and Juco with a pistol on my chest. A book in the air, I'm reading a reading a book, doing homework on speakerphone, talking to my baby mom because I had a newborn. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm, I'm like in my mom, like bro, I don't even do that, but I was motivated, so I did all that and came out of it. You know, climbed yeah. out of that hole, I reached level of success, and then got beat down by this drug, bro. That yeah. drug, real, but it wasn't even the drug, bro. It was cause because the the, the the drinking and the drugs wasn't the solution, right? I mean, I mean, I mean, it wasn't a problem. You know what I'm saying? The problem was me. Mm-hmm. I was the problem. That was just a solution. Yeah. You know, the problem, bro. I was the one that needed to work on. You know, the, the drug and alcohol wasn't going to fix none of that like I thought it was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Alex, you got competitive drive, man. With that competitive drive, it allows you to make it from JUCO to a, D, a, D, a D1 scholarship to the league. Is that something that you use with your day-to-day battle with recovery? Like that competitive Absolutely. edge for sure. Absolutely. So, like I was telling y'all before, how I had to recover my knee. I didn't take my recovery as, bro. This is my second chance. Like I'm recovering my life now. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm not recovering. Yeah. That's good. No more. That's good. But I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm not recovering, but I'm recovering my life. Yeah. I'm recovering my kid. Yeah. Bro. I'm recovering my mom grieving over a dead overdose at it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, re- but I'm recovering broken generational curses that my. People put on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Seeing my yeah. dad do it, and he none of my life, bro. Yeah. That's I'm recovering all those things, bro, that affected me growing up. And for the young ones coming behind me, like even my baby, bro, like I'm I'm recovering that. I'm recovering yeah. like my, bro. Yeah. Like for me, it's life for death. Yeah, that's good, man. Yeah, that's <laughs> a great way to look at it, for real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I um, I know you you shared about your counselor uh, at the treatment center. Did you form any other relationships? Are you still currently, you know, speaking to your counselor here and there and, you know, some of the other people that help and sh- shape you through that process? No, nah, absolutely. Absolutely. I like that question because, but it's a, it's a lot of people that deserve, they, they, uh, they flowers. Mm. You know, and uh, Lachey Davis, when I first made the phone call, bro, I was texting. I had my phone and I was texting before I, bro, I was trying to OD. Mm. This was this is like the day before treatment. I was trying to OD and I was in my car and I was at, at, at a bottle out of bag and I had some weed rolled up. And I was texting my program manager from the league and I texted and I said, I need help. Just straight up, I need help. But I'm texting it thinking it's an office phone and I'm texting it to give myself an excuse to go ahead and jump off the bridge. Mm. Off the deep. Mm. So, hey, well, I asked for help. So, you Ain't know, nobody anybody hit me back. Yeah. <sighs> Hit me back, so you know, lying to myself, you know. So, bro, she ended up hitting me back. Wow, Damn. my phone, like, <laughs> I didn't answer. Listen to the voice much. Like, yeah, I got the text message, give me a call back. I'm worried about you. As I'm reading it, she's calling again, so I answered her. Hey, let's what's going on. She's like, Hey, no, like, what's going on with you? Yeah. You know, you okay? I started crying. No, I'm not okay. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what's going on. I can't figure it out. You know, I'm drunk right now. I'm high. You know, I need, need some real life help and say, hey, look. And bro, I sent a phone and invented with her for about an hour, hour and a half while her newborn was in the back crying. And she sat on the phone with me. But at this at this time, probably like 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, her time, East Coast time. And she heard me talk, bro. She didn't cut me off. She didn't raise me off the phone. She let me get it all out. She said, hey, look, I'm going to send the treatment. All I need you to do is go to the airport. Mm. Just go to the airport. Yeah. So, That's a blessing so, right there, man. Yeah, bro. But, Blessing, bro. It was a blessing, bro. Just give me a fight, man, bro. For even reaching back, she could have seen the phone late. Ignored it. Too right. Late. Yeah. She didn't have to. That's not her job to do that. She didn't have to do that. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's how her job description says to help people who need treatment. That's not her job, bro. Mm. <laughs> so, 
But Shay Davis, for sure, I keep in touch with her all the time. Juan, my counselor, I keep in touch with him about, you know, once at, once a month, kind of send him an email, I'll give him a call and check in. Um, a lot of dudes I was in treatment with, we got a group chat. That we, matter of fact, I was in Denver with a dude who, uh, I call him like my brother. We got, you know, both kind of look alike. We got the hair. And, uh, <laughs> you know. Y'all twins. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like my different brother from different mothers, for real. But we was in there. I was in Denver uh, for an event. And I ended up chilling. I ended up staying with him. You know, he showed me love. Stay with him. Maybe use his car, all that, you know. Um, he was in treatment with me. He came month, He came like uh, a week after I did. Uh, there was this one lady, uh, this one older lady, man. I, 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 <laughs> I came in one time. That's how I met her. I came in one time, and I, and I was like, man, I'm tired. You know, she's older, mind you. She's like, what you tired from? And it just hit me. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> 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 okay. okay. Uh, uh, you said you like, what you mean? Uh, <laughs> 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 I did. She was like, okay. <laughs> you know, like, hey, you know, you're not going to make it. You know, the time of that, like, she's older. You know what I'm saying? She's still going. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So we could get cousins. I became cool. I want her name is Shirley or Miss Shelby. Something like that, you know. But uh, I don't keep in contact with her, but she always in my thoughts. Yeah. Oh, that that's good. Always on her. Yeah. It's my guitar. I always say, like, what from? Mm. You know. Uh, and then there's uh, my other manager, my other program manager inside the treatment, Amanda, bro. She was kind of like getting me set up with after treatment and, and kind of calm my anxiety. Because I'm like, I don't know where I'm going to go. Like, if I go back home, nah, don't go back home. I ain't been back home since November 11th, bro. Wow. November 10th. I was about to date, uh, 11 11. That's I ain't been was, back home. AJ, that's what I was, AG, I was, that's what I was going to ask you. Did you have to change your environment? Which you obviously did. But how difficult was that transition not going back home and having to find a new start? Bro, it, 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 it's, it's still new. You know what I'm saying? I still they can't believe it, you know. Uh, but they say, you know, change your people, places, and things. Yeah. Mm. So they say you can't go home because you run the same environment. It's like setting up yourself up for, like, for getting set up for failure, basically. So I could have picked anywhere to go. You know, they would have took care of it. Like, you pick anywhere in the country to go. You just can't go back home. You know, mm -hmm. so me, I'm I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to Miami. I'm going to go to Vegas. You know, San Diego. <laughs> Crazy, you know. You pick it <laughs> where it's pop. I pick the place that's gonna tempt you, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know. So I chose Houston. My daughter out here, and I'm like, what I'm doing, man? Let me go to Houston, be my baby. Yeah. You know, it, it, I ain't really like it out here. I love it now, but again, when I was out here, I was on some BS. Yeah. Now I'm around great people. I'm meeting. I'm meeting owners. You know what I mean? I'm networking. Mm -hmm. You know, my like my vision clear. I'm in the right path. Like I'm being successful. People, I ain't in this doing the crazy stuff. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, it's not as, bro. The world looks different to me now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Than it ever have in my whole life. Not even mm -hmm. just from me being sober. Just me just having like a focused mindset now. You know, but it was hard, man. It was hard to to just not be home. Come out here, you know, leave everything there, and start over, and say, "Okay, this is your life now." Like, I really, like, really start over. No, now I had experience though from playing ball. So, you know, like I said in Juke, I was used to. Okay, my first time leaving home was in Cali, going to Cali. So I was used to different environments and how to adapt. You know, I've been, to, I've been to Green Bay, I've been to New York. You know, I've been to almost any place in the country. I've been to Canada. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm not my own to kind of adapt and start over. But this is a different. It was a different way because I had lost a lot. Yeah, you know, I lost a lot, bro. And I always say, like, yeah, man, that guy took from me and the girl and I took this and she sold that, which is true. But if you look back at it, bro, I so I mean, I gave that away. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, bro, I gave it. I, I happily and willingly gave away my life. <laughs> I right, cares away, bro. Yeah. I gave my my, ex, my uh my materials away. Yeah. I gave my responsibilities. I willingly handed them over, bro. I put the drug first. Yeah. yeah. That's ownership and accountability for sure, man, at its finest.